I've been shooting in digital for a while, but I just picked up this film camera recently and I've honestly really enjoyed shooting with it. I feel like the fact that you're limited in the amount of exposures you can take and you're actually like spending money on each photo kind of makes you a better photographer because it makes you think more about your image and focus on the moment rather than checking your settings on the camera. And also it's just kind of fun to use a camera like this. But it can be pretty intimidating if you're just starting out with photography. So I'm going to give you guys a walkthrough on how to use a film camera. Um, the camera I have is a Pentax K1000, which is one of the most basic film cameras. It doesn't really have any automatic settings or anything. So it's a really good camera to learn on, and it's also pretty inexpensive. But the stuff that I'm going to explain is pretty much applicable to any film camera. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you get your camera is load some film into it. Now on this camera I already have film in it so I'm not actually going to open it up because that would expose all the film and ruin my photos. But I do have a video I shot from last winter of a friend putting some film in his camera. So the first thing you're going to want to do is find this wheel on the left side of your camera and rotate that clockwise until you have all of your film rolled up. You should feel a little bit of tension when you're rolling up your film and you'll know it's fully rolled when that tension is released and there's a little bit of a clicking noise. So once you have your film rolled up, you can pull this dial upwards and you'll hear a clicking noise and then the back of the camera will open. You can pull out the old roll of film and then pull out a new roll of film, load that back in where the old one was, push that dial in. After you have your film canister in the camera, you're going to want to unroll just a little bit of film and find this little slot right here. The film goes into that slot there and you make sure the little holes in the film line up with the sprockets on the wheel here. Once you get that film in the slot, you advance the lever just a little bit, just to kind of engage the sprockets. And then you can go ahead and close your camera and move the lever all the way back. And you're ready to take photos. So once you get your film in your camera, you're gonna to wanna to know how to change the lens. So this is pretty simple. You just push down on the button on the side of the camera here, turn the lens until it comes off. And then if you wanna put the lens back on, you line up these two indexing dots, just like that. And you turn the lens until it clicks. Not much to it there. The knob on the lens that's farthest away from you is the focusing ring. So if you look through the viewfinder and turn that, you'll focus your image. So that's pretty simple. On the right side of the viewfinder is what's called the exposure meter. If you're used to digital photography, this is basically the same thing you'll see on a digital camera. If your exposure meter moves towards the plus side, your image is gonna be brighter. And if your exposure meter moves towards the minus side, your image is gonna be darker. So in most cases, you're gonna to wanna to center your exposure meter so you've got a properly exposed image. When you're shooting on film, there are two ways to adjust the brightness of your photo. The first is using the aperture ring on the lens, and the second is using the shutter speed dial on the top of the camera. When you turn the aperture ring towards a smaller number, you're gonna be letting in more light, so you'll have a brighter picture, but you're also gonna have a shallower depth of field. So if you're shooting portraits and you want that blurry background look, you're gonna to wanna to use a smaller aperture number. When you turn the aperture towards a bigger number, you're gonna be letting in less light, so you're gonna get a darker picture, but you're also gonna have more depth of field, so if you wanna shoot a landscape, maybe you wanna turn it towards F11 or F16, so you can get more of that image in focus. Now, if you look at the shutter speed dial on the top of the camera, if you turn that towards a bigger number, like one one thousandth of a second, that's a really fast shutter speed, so you're gonna be letting in less light, you'll have a darker picture. But if you're shooting a moving subject, you're gonna freeze that action and get a nice crisp picture. If you've got a slower shutter speed, like 1 30th of a second or 1 15th of a second, you're going to be letting in a lot more light so you get a brighter picture. But if you've got a moving subject, they might be blurred. So for an example, if you want to shoot a picture of someone jumping, you're going to want a fast shutter speed like 1 1,000th of a second or 1 500th of a second. And then looking through your viewfinder, you're going to want to adjust your aperture until your subject is properly exposed. Another example would be if you want to shoot a portrait and you want a shallow depth of field, you're going to want to start with your aperture and maybe go to f2.8 or f2 and then you look through the viewfinder and adjust that exposure meter with a shutter speed until that's properly set thanks so much for watching this video hopefully these tips will get you guys started shooting on film i personally love it and it's a lot of fun shooting hopefully you guys will too if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments and i'll answer all of them until then like and subscribe and i will see you next week